Good afternoon and welcome. Um, we usually do uh, say hello in the chat box, but Mary was, Hayes was just asking if we could do an introduction. So we'll do that in just a minute, have everybody introduce themselves. And we do still have other people still logging on. So um, we are recording today's webinar. So we will share that with you within a week. So my name is Robin Roberts and I'm the coordinator for the WorkSource Georgia Academy. And as you know, today's webinar is a demonstration of the WorkBay Next platform. And the purpose is in, to introduce the platform and its features in order to determine uh, the level of interest and in possibly investing in this tool. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, actually, since we're doing this as a meeting, it will be more informal. If you wanna enter questions in the chat box or even verbally, um, well, I'll leave that up to Mary since she's going to run the presentation or give the presentation. So with that, I will introduce you to Mary Hayes, who is the CEO of WorkBay, and I will turn it over to her. Lovely. So we'll unshare your screen, Robin. And uh, my co-founder is here. My daughter, Alice, is co-founder of WorkBay, and I'm hoping that everybody here would also hi tiffany everyone here would also uh say hello and introduce himself we can do it as a bit of a popcorn um but first i will say that supar is here uh president of the augusto augusta metro chamber uh and her colleague jasmine is here i thought i saw jasmine come in there you are jasmine and also Yvonne Williams, president of the Greater Macon Chamber of Commerce and her colleague, Lynn Farmer. And so uh, our company has uh, a platform that is being used across the country uh, and is being used in Augusta and Greater Macon. It's a learning management system that can be deployed across a community as infrastructure. It's integrated with job posting and applicant tracking system so if you see a job, here's the learning that can help you get that job. And if you do some learning, here's the learning that gets you to this job. And it has a shared dashboard behind it. I'd like to invite everyone to introduce themselves. Uh, so Robin, why don't you start and then, uh, and then you choose the next person to introduce themselves. And please, while we do introductions, if you would, turn on your camera and open up your microphone so we can get to know each other a little better. Sure, thanks, Mary. Uh, so again, I'm Robin Roberts. I am the coordinator for the WorkSource Georgia Academy, and we provide training platform basically for our local areas. Um, and I will ask Andrea Young uh, if she would introduce herself. Thank you, Robin. Um, like Robin said, uh, my name is Andrea Young. I'm the digital content specialist here at the Office for Workforce Development. Um, I help Robin quite a bit with the academy trainings and work in social media and websites, or updating our website rather. Let's go to Jasmine. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, good afternoon. I am Jasmine Sims. I'm Associate Vice President uh, for Workforce Solutions um, with the Augusta Metro Chamber of Commerce in Augusta, Georgia. Um, and I oversee the um, content and continuous um, usage and development of our Talent to Work uh, platform that has been um, spearheaded by our CEO, Supar, and CEO, Mary Hayes of Workday. And so you want to pass the intro to? I will pass it on to my CEO, Supar. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Sue. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sue Parr. I'm president of the Augusta Metro Chamber of Commerce, and greetings from Augusta. Sue's going to pass to Yvonne. So, yes, I will pass to Yvonne and Thank Lynn. You. I'm so happy to be with you all today. Um, I'm Yvonne Williams, president and CEO of the Greater Macon Chamber. I will say that workforce talent development is our number one mission in charge among our members, among our employers, and among our community as well as region. So this was the best of the best that we brought to make in the sheer um, ability to have a strong platform that can be seen as a regional opportunity and also to be inclusive of the three-way system that we enjoy, which is the job seeker, the major employer, 
and the curriculum director all integrated to really drive um, our workforce initiatives. So this became our endorsement of WorkBay. And Yvonne, you're beside Lynn, so Lynn could say hello. Yes. And I will say hello. I am Lynn Farmer, Director of Workforce Development and Talent Retention for the Greater Macon Chamber of Commerce. And we're going to pass to Sid Jessup. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, my name's Sid Jessup. I work with WorkSource Georgia in, in the Athens area. And uh, glad to be a part of the meeting today. Look, looking forward to see what you guys got and, and sort of go from there. And I'm going to pass to uh, Rhonda Keeter. Oh, we'll come back to Rhonda. And Tiffany, will you say hello first? Sure. Tiffany Andrews, WorkSource Make and Bib, have the pleasure of working with Mary and her team and Yvonne and Lynn at the chamber on ensuring that, as Yvonne said, we're meeting all three pillars of the workforce platform and endorse it heavily. I've drank the Kool-Aid guys, but all the directors know because I have definitely said good graces about the program. So look forward to today. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Who should we meet next? I will kick it over to Miss Goodwin, Latanya. She went off though. She was on just a second ago. There she is. Hi, hi, friends. <laughs> as as Tiffany has mentioned, um, she's shared a cup with me, so I'm certainly ready to uh, drink the Kool Aid, so to speak. Um, I'm over here, the Work Source Director of East Central Georgia. We're right outside of uh, Sue's Augusta area. We're Thompson, so um, Thompson and nine counties of the CSRA. Thank you. Do I need to kick it off to someone as well? Yes, please. All right. Well, I'm going to do my friend Rob LeBeau. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Rob LeBeau. I'm the director for WorkSource Atlanta Regional, seven county area here in Metro Atlanta. I uh, want to say a quick shout out to Yvonne Williams. We worked together a long time when you were here in Perimeter Center. Good to see you, Yvonne. Um, I will pass it to my colleague right next door, Amy Lancaster in Atlanta. Hi, everybody. Uh, Amy Lancaster King. I'm executive director for WorkSource Atlanta. Happy to be here and learn more about the program. And I will um, kick it off. I hope I've kept track of everybody that's gone already. Um, Vivian Stewart, have you gone yet? Excuse me. Thank you. My name is Vivian Stewart, and I am also from Area 13, WorkSource East Central. And I'm assistant director here on the director, Lantanya Goodwin. And I pass the baton to Whitney Williams. Hey, Whitney. We're hoping you'll turn your camera on to at least say hello. Okay. I'll, she uh, I'll introduce Whitney. Whitney is from Area 2. She doesn't have audio or video. So, <laughs> hi, Whitney uh, Williams is the director for WorkSource Georgia Mountains, Area 2. And I am Ebony Tucker. I am the youth supervisor for Area 2 yeah. Georgia Mountains. And I'm going to kick it off to Justin Kirby. I knew it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Justin Kirby. Um, I'm also in uh, WorkSource Georgia Mountains. I'm the youth prep program uh, intake assistant. Um, but I would like to say that um, Karen Kurtzler, our deputy commissioner for workforce development, is not able to join us today, but she is the one that uh, requested that we provide this demonstration. Um, but we do have our executive director, uh, Kristen Larhoven. And Kristen, are you available to introduce yourself? Yeah, you guys are going to have to forgive me. I'm just not turning on the video today. <laughs> I'm getting over a little bit of um, some fall crud. Um, but uh, thank you all for joining us. And um, thank you, Robin, for putting this together. And I'm looking forward to um, hearing uh, what this platform has to offer. Thanks, Robin. Hello, everyone. This is Janice West. I'm the Workforce Director in WorkSource Georgia Middle Flint area, which is located in America, Georgia. And I'll pass it off to Rhonda Keeter if she's on now. Hey, that was my bad. Rhonda doesn't have uh, audio, so I'm going to pass it to Rima Sullivan. Hey, I'm Rima Sullivan. I'm the uh, Youth Program Director for WorkSource Northeast Georgia. Not uh, 12 county region uh, based in Athens. And Rima, I think we haven't heard from Justin Kirby. 
Hi, yes, I, I just introduced myself after Ebony. I'm, I'm with WorkSource Georgia Mountains, the Youth Intake Program Assistant. Um, I, I see that uh, Kim, I think this is Kim Morris, is in the meeting, if she would like to introduse herself. Hi, I'm uh, Kimberly Ellis. I'm with the Technical College System of Georgia. I work with our 22 technical colleges and our career services areas. Um, so all of our colleges, just their uh, career services department. All right, so Kim, you and Kim Morris, just do Kim as your name. <laughs> yes. Oh, is there, and I only saw one Kim here, so I was assuming it was me. So I, if I jumped in front of Kim Morris, I apologize, but I only saw one Kim, so. D. Jackson, Whitney Williams, I think we haven't met. And then I think we've gone, and Mr. Darrell. If you haven't. Everyone. I'm Darrell Stillings, Works Source Middle Georgia. I represent the 10 counties around Macon, so I'm somewhat uh, familiar with the program, but i uh, love to see it again. So it's really amazing, and we see it even just as we all introduce ourselves, how much in the post-pandemic we've had to find ways to connect. And what Workbase Platform is all about is trying to give a suite of tools that can help you connect and can help capture all the data from those connections and uh, share them for more information. Um, Alice, if you'll just speak to this slide for a minute, I'm going to get the noise turned down here. Sure. So the Workday platform is really designed to connect all stakeholders in a community. So uh, it's a place where students and job seekers and employers and colleges and chambers of commerce and workforce boards can all come together on one system. We're really uh, built to be highly integratable so that tools that are being used uh, across the community can be integrated into one place and be shared on a shared dashboard and also shared as a shared resource for students and job seekers who are looking for opportunities in their community. So we have really um, focused on the domain of people who are earning below $25 an hour, although the platform supports everyone and provides career exploration across the entire economy. Um, some of the tools that we've created have been specially designed for accessibility and inclusiveness uh, and to support that worker under $25 an hour. A reason for that is that we uh, started out, we built training programs for 30 Fortune 500 companies in six languages deployed in 45 countries, Walmart, Disney, and McDonald's, and so forth. And right now in the American economy, corporations are spending $180 billion on employee training programs. The entire work we owe a program is $19 billion. So it's virtually 10 times, nearly 10 times more that corporate America is spending on training. And yet when someone gets training inside a corporation, the credential they earned stays inside the corporation. So even though Walmart might spend $4,000 training an employee, when that person walks out the Walmart threshold and goes to apply at their next job, none of the credentials they earned are, are traveling with them. And so we first started thinking about the Workbay platform as a product that we could provide so that you could create a credential that was recognized across your community. Been at this for 20 years now and been a part of all of the different major initiatives in the United States working on credentialing and competency management. And what we did with Workbay was take the tools that we gave to someone who was like that senior HR officer for a Walmart or Disney a learning management system that integrated with their job posting applicant tracking that integrated with their succession planning and performance management tools and make it available as an easy economical subscription to a suite of tools and a library of job readiness training that could be deployed as infrastructure across a community. I know that you're all working on these incredible challenges right now. In the post-pandemic economy, you've got family reprioritization, working with those who are dealing with childcare issues, the worker exit, great resignation, the gray tsunami that are all impacting your local economies. 
And then the fact that so many of the post-pandemic business decisions were, uh, were movements towards automation uh, that have required a degree of reskilling, upskilling, and then also outskilling employees from their existing job into a new job inside the organization. And we wanna give you all our love and respect uh, and kudos for all the work you've been doing to deal with this extraordinary number of challenges and changes in your, in your economy and dealing with your pipeline. We're very much trying to support the One Workforce Policy Teagall that came down um, during President Trump's administration, mandating greater collaboration, integrated service delivery, sharing of data and leveraging of resources to get better outcomes for WIOA customers. We know that for uh, everyone trained through WIOA dollars, only one out of three ends up working in the field they were trained for. And we're hoping by providing better tools and giving you support for career exploration tied to employment and training that we can do more with you to help in that result. We know that as, uh, as a workforce board, you're dealing across these multiple different players in your system and acting as the hinge that's closing the gap between people without jobs and jobs without people. I'm gonna take a second now to log in and show you how the platform works. Good so far, Lynn. So in each community where we are, we are um, branded for that, that community's own system, customized and localized for each of them. But um, this is Greater Macon. This is Talent to Work. There are similarities and differences for, for each of the systems, but the underlying technology works the same. Meet Jack. Jack has recently finished high school. He knows he wants to be a college graduate, but he can't decide on a college or a field of study. He just knows he wants a great career. So Jack signs up for the application. Jack goes into the career section to try to find some inspiration. He watches a few different videos of professionals in his community working in different careers. He even recognizes the machinist. They shop at the same store. Jack then finds the registered nurse career card. He notices there are a lot of opportunities, 374 job posts in his community. Jack watches the video and he likes the nurse's story. She explains her day-to-day -day tasks and it all seems like something Jack would like. Jack finds there are several educators in his community offering nursing courses. Jack decides to do some free learning on the app that's related to nursing to see if he finds it interesting. He does. And he scores 100% on the tests, so he's feeling pretty confident about his choice. After reading about the different colleges, Jack decides on a local community college because he can complete his nursing education in as few as 18 months. Jack is excited. He already has a few badges on his resume from those courses he passed on the app. And in 18 months, he knows he'll be hired for one of those 374 open jobs. Love the work you do in your community. When someone first comes into the uh, system as a user, they go through a profile builder. And we have many different uh, types of profile builders and uh, systems that can be implemented. This one is based on the Holland Criterion Reference Testing and asks you quickly to identify skills, knowledge, and interest. Based on the answers to the profile builder, you can choose to keep building your resume, find opportunities, and start le learning. We've done more and fewer different forms of that immediate assessment, and we can integrate to existing assessments that you may have, such as a Cooter or U Science or others. Uh, we work with ACT and their assessments. And then based on the answers that we receive, the learner lands on the homepage. As they continue working on the platform, the system is continuously aggregating information about that user and using recommendation engine technology, just like Netflix does to keep showing you the next uh, show you wanna watch. 
It's showing you the next career you want to pursue. And as it suggests careers on the system, you also can go into it and based on keyword search, you can uh, just look for a career card or, or try things out. This is just a site I'm using to demo for you. So here's our guy that we saw a second ago. So we'll see on every career card a video of someone talking about who they are, what they do, what they love about what they do. These videos are all closed captioned for accessibility. Yeah. And we are working with a team uh, for American Sign Language integration into the platform. And we've also developed uh, Spanish language subtitles for all, uh, all videos. These are, those are rolling out in December. We pick up the average salary from the State Department of Labor Career Cluster and Pathway. Wherever we have video, we have text. Where we have text, uh, Set up and it reads out loud. Uh, if I click show related careers, it'll show me career pathway to this career card. I see the courses related to machinist. These are all video-based courses and the app is native Android and iOS uh, for a smartphone app, as well as a browser-based system. The courses uh, that come with about 200 what courses is and they are video-based courses that run through best practice in online learning, learn it, uh, which gives you the theory and all of it in small little Lego brick chunks of five to seven minute videos um, optimized for accessibility and literacy access. Watch it that show you a video of someone on the job applying those skills because the purpose of knowledge is action when we're talking about job readiness training. Uh, so they can see place there. Uh, problem solving and situational learning experiences, group and offline offline activities that can be done for um, Goodwill and others use these courses in their classroom and they have a way that they can assign a group uh, result. Skill surveys, resources, feedback. As someone does the learning, it's writing to their resume so that they're getting um, a formatted resume with the questions they have answered and the competency language of the courses they've done. As an instructor, uh, instructors can also integrate their own um, courses onto the system so that you'll get uh, your program results. If you have completed a college program as a machinist, obviously that's going to write into your resume. And we have a number of different ways that we integrate to I miss global or um, or uh, Badger or the other credential engine, other other systems. We love to integrate with those, as well as integrating with um, other badging systems and credentialing systems. We also integrate with other third party courses. I'm showing you an example from the state of Arkansas that has a statewide uh, integration with LinkedIn Learning. Other states have uh, statewide integrations with Udemy. And, um, and so we do that direct integration again so that you can find out more of that and search based on that. And then linking out to post-secondary programs yeah. listed in proximity to the user. All of the information of the students uh, or, or citizens uh, view of what videos did they look at, what, uh, oh, that didn't have any job posts on it, what job posts they looked at, uh, what, what uh, training they did, et cetera, is all coming back uh, on, on the dashboard for you as a career counselor. We also integrate to the National Labor Exchange uh, Job Board. Uh, we have a number of direct integrations to large employers. Small companies, Main Street companies can create a company profile and post a job. The application goes through to the um, system, to the site of the original job posting, but it also reads the job post out loud and connects that job post to a career card so that similarly, the learner can find uh, courses that would help them to get a job like that. 
Alice, what did I miss? I think that's a good overview of the uh, job seeker student view. I would say we could pause there for a second and see if there are any questions. Um, one important aspect, obviously, for all of you is every single thing that that user clicks on, everything that they write into their resume is writing into a dashboard. Um, and the dashboards are assigned based on user type. So there's the teacher dashboard, agency dashboard, uh, super admin dashboard, et cetera. So we can show you that in a second, but if there are any questions about the job seeker student view, uh, now might be a good time. So one part of the system also for the user view that I know that Lynn Farmer likes is uh, that as you're looking down this, the different tools that you can explore organizations in your region. And so when employers come on board, they're able to make uh, their employer booth and uh, profile page. And uh, that then gives uh, information of where they're located and courses that they would suggest that, that you take uh, if you're going to apply to a job with them. They can post up photo galleries, videos, and you can join that employer's network. Once you choose to join the network, Similarly to if you apply to the organization, that employer can then see your resume and your learning results that you have chosen to share with them. We also open up live virtual career fairs so that employers can connect directly with, um, with the users who come on board. And we run live streaming channels of video interviews, video, resume, uh, resume sharing, questionnaires and um, video resumes. Lynn, would you say a little bit about your Making Works career fair? Sure, we um, did our first career fair with Bibb County High Schools and they have a fair in April where all juniors and seniors um, have to decide how they're going to be 3E ready. Um, they want those students to be either enrolled in the military um, or enlisted in the military, enrolled in college or employed when they leave high school with their degree. Um, and so we participated in that. Um, military recruiters were there, all the colleges and universities, job providers who were willing to take high school students straight out of high school and train them on the job and employers for, who were looking for engineers or whatever were there to talk about available careers in our local community for those who wanted to go get a technical degree or a four-year degree. Um, we're focused really heavily on connecting to local jobs and local career opportunities. We did a second job fair this past summer where we partnered with Visit Macon and Goodwill and we had a day on service and hospitality industry. We did it for a week on the virtual booth. We did it for two days in person, but those jobs stayed up on the platform. Our second day was on large industry and large business. We had um, seven or 800 jobs there both days for people to apply for. Um, we did not see the numbers that we might have seen at a job fair before COVID because again of the, I think the COVID situation, but what we did see on day two was people in their suits and in their nice outfits coming with their resumes in hand, willing to have an interview right away and we saw people get hired that day. Our employers were happy um, with the connections that they made in that. But we like it because we can have a job fair, but we can leave those jobs up and promote them on the platform for a week for our employers. Thanks, Lynn. And I'd like Alice to uh, talk a little bit more about career fairs, but first I'll I'll just say quickly that uh, in addition to the career fair system, uh, there's also on the learning system, I'll give an example of this one. So we've just, they, if people go into explore learning, um, they can choose from different learning libraries. And this is a little bit of news I'm sharing with uh, 
Lynn and Jasmine and Sue and Yvonne as well. So one of the programs on here is the Foundations in Direct Care. This program has uh, been uh, sold for $250 a learner. We've just arranged to have it open in the first semester of 2022 uh, so that everyone can take it. And we're going to run a blended program of Foundations in Direct Care from Valentine's Day till April 15th. And SEDEX, so as people go through this learning, it's all, like I said, video-based. It's a 60-hour program, super accessible, and it links into a live theater where registered nurse will be providing training and ASL sign language interpretation throughout the training. And as someone completes the training, it will badge their resume. And SEDEXO has told us that they will employ every graduate of the program. So it's a sure thing. They actually need several thousand uh, care providers across the country. They're a $22 billion organization. So they're across our country. And they said they will provide an invitation to an interview and expect to hire anyone who graduates from this program. So there are the virtual career fairs. When an employer can see that a, a candidate not only has their regular resume, but also has the credentials in that skills-based learning, it lets them provide an invitation to an interview in a way that's, that's very objective and concrete. Allie? Yes, I just need uh, screen share abilities. Okay, I've got, uh, let's say Andrea is the host, so I asked her if she would do that. Got it, okay. Got it, call. okay. So just a little visualization for you. Um, the whole system is built so you can customize um, your own career fair events or any type of event. It can be live stream or it can be booth focused. So uh, this is a smart place. This is another platform, um, but you'll see here, you know, these businesses have highlighted themselves uh, up top. And then as part of their booth, they have the ability to have a video, they have a description, there's a live chat, uh, live interviews can be going on at the same time as the event. Um, they can upload any type of video. During uh, the, I, the first time we kind of ran through this, a lot of people were doing just videos on their phone saying hello and introducing themselves to applicants. It can be from as formal as, as you would imagine to informal as you would imagine. And then the benefit of having, um, there are a lot of career fair platforms out there, but the benefit of having it integrated into a platform like this is that the job postings are integrated into the system. So when a user comes in and applies to that job, that employer has access to that user's resume and their activities and uh, every, everything that they need to make the hire inside of their dashboard. And so I'm going to flip over and show you, um, this is an agency dashboard. It, it, could, it has a lot of similarities to a teacher dashboard and also many similarities to an employer dashboard. So when a user who has admin capabilities first signs in, they get um, access to kind of the key things that they want to do in the system. I'm going to click over to the reports dashboard and you can see this agency here hired. They have 67 active users or clients that they're managing in their system. Uh, they can track all the activities of those users throughout the weeks. Um, it's very easy to get started. Again, very heavily video based and designed to be, um, to really, really show the person how to use the system. But each step of the platform has a little video, walks you through how to use it and brings you to the place that you need to be to get that set up. Let me go back here for a second. Um, other very cool features of the dashboard, you can actually search in your community for uh, employers who are available for skills-based volunteerism uh, in the community. So you can search for employers who have indicated their availability for career fairs, their availability for internships, et cetera. And when you submit, you get a list of employers 
you can view their profiles and also send them a message to invite them to participate. Uh, you can track all opportunities on the site and for every individual that you manage or you have admin access uh, over, you can track all the applications that they've made, the jobs that they've followed, and um, you can view the activity on each one of these job postings. You can build and participate in events, which we kind of went over, and you can view all the details of your users. Um, so this is our demo user, so I'll go to him, but I can see that he signed up. I can see all of the information that he put in the the school group that he belongs to, his area of study, his college intention, his description of himself, um, all of the groups that he is a part of, which I am a manager of. And I can view his profile and see everything that he's doing on the system. Uh, so I can see everything that he's clicked and I can also pull up his resume I can send him a message, of course. Then I can also go directly into his course activities. So here I can see a progress report for everything that he's doing on the system, um, his quiz results, et cetera. You can also, of course, pull reports that are based on the entire group that you manage. Um, so full course reports, full uh, reports that show uh, the, the individuals who are the most interested in specific jobs. Um, essentially, everything that's on the system is trackable. Um, also, you can assign courses. So you can simply have courses there that the user will explore, either by going explore learning or by seeing a course attached to a career card or a career card attached to a job posting. But you also can assign courses and then job postings can also be content managed so that only those who have completed this training will see this job post. Um, the other aspect of the dashboard, Alice, is some clients um, need to do particular reporting to government. So they are collecting more personally identifying information, demographic information and background information. And that can be developed as a separate, what we call lockbox for your organization, which is then you own that data separated from the general data and you have an extra set of controls over that data that you could lock us out of that, uh, that set of information, but it can be mixed to your general information that's on the platform for other reports, government reports. Um, Sue and Jason, would you like to give a little bit of a uh, sharing of how you're using the, the platform or how you would choose to use it or anything you think folks would want to know? Sure. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, you know, thank you, Mary, for, for hosting this. Um, and just going back to one of your slides, I actually just got off of a, another Zoom call at one o'clock where we were talking about disengaged workers. I think if there's one takeaway that all of us need to have today is that we've got to do things differently. Um, I know in our part of the state that we have a lot of disengaged uh, potential job seekers out there. Uh, they really, they don't know where to start. Um, we've taken an option with Talent to Work to create a regional uh, job platform, uh, job marketplace. Um, you know, when you look at uh, over the last decade, companies like Indeed and ZipRecruiter and even our own state job sites, you know, a job seeker is basically relying on an algorithm, you know, as to whether they find a job or not. And that's that's not how we can do, um, you know, workforce development. We can do better than that. And so I think if there's one takeaway today, it's that we do have to, to think better. You know, when we looked at talent to work and, and work bay a year and a half ago, we actually decided to go into a technology platform mostly to uh, reinforce and stand up our uh, experiential learning programs for high school students. We actually have 
a um, synchronous link between a uh, high school uh, in, a high schooler in Richmond County actually has a direct link to talent to work so that there's this seamless integration of what they're learning in school. We wanted to take the world of school to the world of work, uh, whether that's CTA instruction or dual enrollment and actually connect high school students to um, those real world opportunities that exist within the community. But I think the real secret sauce of, of Work Bay and Talent to Work is, is again, creating that, uh, taking the job transaction back to a unique customized conversation between one job seeker and, and one employer and not looking at it as a commodity. Uh, we don't want our workforce development uh, efforts in our community to be based on commodity and the most workers and, and you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. So uh, we're working on building our relationships with the techni Augusta Technical College right here in Augusta to um, have that seamless connection with them where their curriculum is, is actually, you know, going to populate to our site. Um, and, and again, it, it, takes, it takes time to develop all of that personal connection and content, but we're very hopeful in the short term we're hoping that this really engages a lot of those job seekers that um, have just, again, disengaged from the workforce, need a reason to come back. The reason to come back is that you now have a one-stop shop. You can actually have a conversation with an employer. You're not loading your resume to a mega site and crossing your fingers. Um, and if you are seeking a job that you need upskill or you need to be retrained for, uh, if you're in retail and you want to go into healthcare, uh, this is the site that takes you on that guided path, on that glide path that gets you to where you want to go. So we're excited. Um, and again, we're taking it very incrementally, using it a lot for our high school students to be on the proactive side of our workforce solution programs, but also attempting to integrate a lot of our employers. Uh, you know, we have employers that haven't updated their job descriptions in, in a, you know, in a long time. This forces a, a, an employer to really look at that job description and break it down uh, in terms of what, what are they saying? What are they saying they want? And how does that really speak to a job seeker? And what, you know, what Work Bay and Talent to Work does is it creates that common language. When, you know, when, when there's a manufacturing production job and someone can see that video, um, it creates that unique conversation. Uh, and again, takes it back to one to one. So I hope I didn't leave anything out, Mary. Um, just a quick, quick synopsis of our experience. Thank you, Sue. Thank you very much. Is anyone there? It's hard to talk to y'all when y'all have your cameras off and your microphones off. It's really hard. It feels like we're talking into a, a black wall. But uh, if you do have any questions, comments, suggestions, concerns, we'd love to have you shout out and let us know. So in talking uh, with our clients about stories that we did a look at who are the different people, as Sue was saying, like, how, how, does, how do we make this personal? So here's a, an example that uh, we have of that employer who uh, has had a hard time to meet the demand uh, of the labor shortages across the board. We all know there's about 11 million open jobs right now in the United States and that for every job that's posted we figure Department of Labor figures there are three more that are never posted so we currently have probably 44 million job opportunities in the country and uh, quite an extraordinarily high non-participation in the labor market and this is hurting our Main Street employers so in this example of uh, an employer, she's identified growth opportunities. She's thinking about how she could use different ways to change her business. How could the platform help this person? Well, by having this collaborative platform where she can post a job and related free learning that job applicants can take to be more objectively considered, uh, their resume is not just what they say, but what they have proven they can do. Um, it helps her to uh, close that skills gap 
uh, at the speed of business. It also, though, for your employers, helps them to see as they post a job and a career card connects to it, they will see on the career card the post-secondary programs in their region that are articulating graduates with the skills they're looking for and provides a network of support to career force workforce counselors like yourself so that we triangulate across the different system. And um, where we have someone who is uh, our example user of an unemployed or underemployed worker who's been laid off for a job and has the time poverty issues of being uh, a, a care provider to children or a care provider to a parent. Um, they have time poverty. They need to be able to get the things, the skills they need to upskill online so that they're able to, they can't show up for a class from nine to five. They have to be able to find those skills trainings online, do their career and job searching online. So for that, for that user integrating with the regional job postings, we either have reskilling programs that directly connect to that job post or with your um, dashboard, you're able to identify the gaps. Where do we have jobs where there are no local post-secondary programs or credentials that are going to graduate and articulate the workers with the skills needed to get the job? We also um, run WorkBay platforms offline as well as online and in interrupted internet environments, uh, locked down environments, such as in correctional systems. And there uh, workers uh, or uh, folks who are residents of uh, correctional facilities, those residents are able to earn skills and badges do career exploration based on the zip code of the community they will return to. And all of that is, is captured and managed through a complicated system. I'll tell you more about it if you ask me about it, but it's credentialed, managed, and then securely uploaded to a cloud-based system where uh, when the person is released, they can activate that. So if I was uh, incarcerated in state or federal uh, corrections, youth state federal corrections in Georgia, um, the, the work that I do on a work platform is being captured, held securely. And if I choose uh, on returning to Macon or Augusta, I can activate my record uh, of uh, resume and credentials. And those will be ported into the Macon or Augusta platform where now I can continue uh, to find success. And we all know that the uh, best uh, way to reduce recidivism is through employment. And so this collaborative platform is, uh, you know, it's optimized for accessibility. It's optimized, uh, as Sue was saying, to take it personal and uh, to find those unique solutions that will help create an inclusive economy. And, uh, and the high school student who uh, has aptitude uh, in, his, in their career and technical class, in their sports classes, uh, maybe isn't aware of all the many opportunities for earning uh, that are available to them and career exploration. And so on the platform, there are over a thousand career cards they're continually being added to. There are more than 2,300 videos on the platform. A thousand of those are career portraits. There's more than 200 free online courses that come with the platform, all of them built with advisory counselors, councils of employers to really put into the hands of every student, every learner, a full and comprehensive view of their local regional economy. Uh, customized, localized for them. Robin, that's what we had to share. Great, thank you very much. Um, great information, very impressive platform. Does anybody have any questions or comments at this time? Yvonne or Lynn or Jasmine or Sue, were there any last words that you would say? 
I would I would just say um, that we're getting a lot of feedback from employers that they have to go much deeper than their original strategy. They need to get high school students in uh, a very, uh, uh, you know, a, a mode to where they're looking at their careers much earlier and that they can rely on those students to become candidates on a near-term basis to have dual enrollment or to have the, the experience within the company perspective. And that's driving us to really dig down into the, the high schools and get the students aware and connected really early so that they can follow the pathway of the certifications, they can follow the, uh, the Career Technical Institute with the university support going forward with continued cert certification. So we, we see this as a major career building opportunity for the long term to keep citizens dutifully employed in our region. And that's why we started with the, getting the K through 12 fully engaged in the Bibb County system. So all of the ninth grade students are currently engaged about 3000 already uh, on the platform. We've got two other counties adjoining that want to join our platform to build out their uh, high school connectivity. And this is helping our employers see the numbers of what they can anticipate of people that will be looking at uh, the job opportunity. So we see this as a way that it's a win-win all the way around for uh, helping us grow the population base, helping us grow into the careers and ultimately uh, growing prosperity for income in the region. So it's, it's a strong economic development initiative. And we, we really believe that it's the right thing with building these partnerships early on to sustain us over the next decade or more. All right, thank you, thank you. Latonya, did you have something you wanted to ask? I did, as it relates to the credentials, I am just curious. So, um, so it sounds as if this can follow someone throughout their career and the credentials that they receive from any role. So, that data is, I heard you say mention Macon and Augusta because that's the, you know, the areas that are there. But what if I am off in California and I want to get my information that I achieve out in the Macon or Augusta area? Does it follow me, the participant as well? Or is it, you know, owned by a chamber or a school system? All of the data is owned by the user and by the client, in this case, Augusta or uh, Macon. And uh, they own the data and activity on the platform. So if you, uh, and it, it is being used by state longitudinal data systems in some cases. So for example, if, uh, what's that called? Georgia Awards or something. In other states, uh, their, their longitudinal state longitudinal data system has made arrangements, we don't own the data at all. So the state longitudinal data system has made a, a, an arrangement with the client uh, to capture that data and, and use that in their longitudinal employability records. Um, if you were in California, uh, we are only deployed in the uh, federal and state correctional systems in, in California. So that's the only place that we would have met you, but you could, <laughs> if you're moving to Macon, but if you're in Macon, you can enter your own information there in your resume. You can enter it for yourself. And then once you're in the platform, any additional, any additional credentials, uh, any competencies proven are, that are required become a part of that record. So, uh, and any LinkedIn things, any Udemy things, those are all acquired. And then with post-secondary programs, as we're working with post-secondary programs, they are sharing over their transcripts. So uh, the state of Arkansas, every transcript of every learner in Arkansas in post-secondary is accessible to the system. And that's just a hookup that we do client by client. Now that's impressive. That surely will help us with follow-up sometimes. <laughs> it's, um, it's really interesting, the impact uh, on uh, conversations with the workforce boards 
and uh, with the Department of Commerce. The Department of Commerce is really keen to have that information, I know, in Arkansas because they're trying to attract employers to Arkansas, and so they want to have that centralized data system of transcripts of both formal and informal learning, like just-in-time learning as well as a traditional degree. Um, for example, Tyson Foods there has just put in a full robotics manufacturing system, which is additional credential to the University of Arkansas's robotics program. And it all is going into the state longitudinal data system being fished out by the Department of Commerce. Very good, thank you, Mary. Daryl, did you have a, a question? Yes. Um... For a lay person, how long would it take to get someone proficient in managing the system? It's, it's pretty straightforward, I would say. There's videos in every different area and uh, very much designed to be uh, easy, easy to use no matter, no matter the user that you are using it. Like we normally do a one hour training demo um, right, Lynn? Yes, and I, I would say that um, y'all have been great to be willing to train along the way and work with us as we've trained. And Lauren and I are now able to go in and uh, we just signed up um, 2,400 users at Central Georgia Technical College. They're adult learners who are returning for um, high school equivalency or more career training. And we were able to work with their department leads and to train their um, instructors and their counselors. Um, and then we pass them off to you and Alice and all of you to connect them and get the student system set up for them. So we've had a great experience as far as training accessibility. Um, and I will say that if Lynn Farmer can use the system, anybody can. So <laughs> I have to have user friendly and that comes from my son who's a computer science engineer and programmer. He's like, you know, mom's gotta have user friendly. And I found it very easy, you know, once I spent time with it and learning, so. Okay, that means it'll take me twice as long to take Lynn to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come over personally and work with you. <laughs> I, know, I was about to say, Daryl, you, you've got Lynn at your beck and call, so you have nothing to worry about. All right. It, it really has been easy, though. I, and I think people a lot of times look at it because it's so complicated. It looks difficult. There's a lot in it. But when you get in, it's really amazing how easy it is to maneuver around and explore everything and how quickly it begins to make sense and come together for you, um, which is what I found. At first, I felt like I was drinking from the water hose, but once I got in and created an account and started looking around, it just all fell into place and made sense. And so again, I'm serious. I am not someone that I would consider advanced with technology. Um, you know, I do the minimum with work and such, and I have found it very, very easy to navigate and now to explain to other people from helping people create a virtual booth for a job fair to um, setting up an employer account to, you know, helping a teacher learn how to use her teacher dashboard. Lauren and I are doing all of that now. All right. Thanks, Lynn. I'm looking at Alice's face. She's like, they ain't going to happen, but okay. <laughs> Oh. oh. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, are there any more questions or comments? So, how do employers, we're talking about that customer friendly that Lynn had mentioned, the employers, because most of the time, for us, for workforce boards, and, and Sue is absolutely right, job descriptions are not updated, even when we're going to developing on-the-job training contracts and just trying to hone into what are the specifics that, you, that, you know, that you're looking for, that you're needing. Um, how are the employers embracing putting their information in and then are they able to link it out to... <laughs> I shouldn't use that, no pun intended, LinkedIn or Indeed or those other uh, avenues where they post jobs. 
So um, an employer can create a profile, post a job, and then uh, the client like Lynn or Jazz, they can say, allow this employer to post any job or just to prove one job at a time, uh, depending on if they know the employer and they trust the employer. Then uh, we also can do a direct integration uh, API or RSS feed integration if the employer already has an existing job posting applicant tracking system. So we do that direct integration. And then we also pick up uh, the National Labor Exchange open data feeds. We pick up the um, USA jobs, all the government job postings. Then also as a nonprofit, our clients who are nonprofits are able to uh, have an agreement with Indeed. As a private company, we can't, but our client can have an agreement with Indeed. So we also pull from Indeed. Well, because we also are doing all the other kinds of integrations, like across the country, we're picking up one and a half to two million jobs every morning. Um, we are then running filters to try to find those jobs that are posted duplicatively. And that's a part of our job that we're constantly working on. But we find the most the most uh, engagement, if uh, if Sue and Yvonne agree, is from those career fairs uh, where employers are actually able to meet and talk to people. People show up, and we've had career fairs with uh, up to six thousand uh, users showing up at one time. So they're multiple theater career fairs that we can run. Uh, we've had up to eight simultaneous theaters with 6,000 attendees coming, coming in and out to see a main stage when employers were being interviewed and talking about opportunities and then also booths that they could go into the booth and apply and answer questions. But we also do career fairs with 100 people. Like, makes, no, makes no difference to the technology how many people are, are there. And, but that stuff, it's still about connecting, isn't it, Lynn? It's still about face-to-face. -face. Yeah, it is. It's just about the connections. It is. And we're getting ready. Atrium, as you know, one of the biggest hospital systems here in Macon, Georgia, and they are beginning to, um, well, they're starting December 8th. They are going to come onto the platform. Their upper management from the CEO and some of that upper staff is going to have a panel discussion on the platform to all of the mm -hmm. students. Um, and the topic is um, careers in healthcare, it's more than doctors and nurses. And explain what all the opportunities are. We'll record that hour long panel discussion and leave it up on the platform for other job seekers and students in other systems or anywhere to see that and for them to refer back to. But Atrium then is going to move off into teams and begin interviewing and talking with students individually across um, some of their platforms. And it's going to go on for a couple of days. They've created this novel way to work with it. Um, but they want to be on the platform with this virtual exposure to the students at least once a month. And so um, I think it's a great plan for them. You know, we have CNAs coming out in our technical college and high school and a lot of nursing programs, and they want to engage with that once a month. In the medical device industry, we did something like what I just described for the certified nursing assistant, where we had online programs. And then if you completed the online program, then you had the virtual career fair with the medical device industry employers. And uh, that was, that, that really worked well, uh, but also the employers raised the pay by $2 over the course of time that we were doing that they raised the entry level pay by $2. And then we had with William Sonoma, William Sonoma needed 700 employees for their Christmas, you know, holiday season logistics uh, folks. And they had, a, they had a, anyone with a background was barriered to employment, uh, but their vice president allowed that if someone had done the job readiness training, 12 hour job readiness training, that even if they did have a, as long as a nonviolent offense, uh, then they would get, they would get interviewed for a position. So having this objective thing of having a skills credential and skills badge to show 
your interest in and intention to do the job well uh, was able to supersede that simplistic uh, background check uh, barrier to employment. So we're really finding that where we can do this, this two-part thing that the, that the applicant has objectively identified their credentials and uh, when it's connected to then a virtual career fair. So there's a bit of a connection that, that it really ignites opportunity. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? <clears throat> Excuse me, questions or comments? I would just say to the point of, you know, employers, I think we're finding out a lot of our employers are just having to get very creative. We have a very large manufacturer here, uh, Textron. They opened up a new facility in South Carolina. They needed to hire a lot of people. We have Amazon here trying to hire a thousand people. Um, you know, employers now are, are really understanding they have to look at transportation. Well, first of all, they have to speak and go to where the employees, potential employees are at. They can't just expect to post a job and everybody is going to come to them. It doesn't work that way anymore. You have to go to where the people are at. Um, so we've had companies really get creative about where they, where they advertise. We've had employers talk about transportation where there's a lack of public transportation. We've had employers, of course, talk about, you know, how can they make their compensation packages, you know, more attractive, but, um, you know, it is, it is really uh, from an employer's perspective, you know, going back to the basics, you know, what you did 10, 20 years ago might be what you have to go back to, um, you know, when the job market was, was, you know, 3% and everybody was fine. Uh, we just, have to change. So um, again, I would tell your employers to post videos. Video content is very, very important. Um, when a CEO actually has to talk about the company and why someone would want to work for that company, it's this reality check that is, I think, makes the experience again for them and for the job seeker uh, more relevant and, um, and really more, again, more appealing. Um, when they can make that direct ask. Um, we've done a lot of videos, thanks to Mary, here locally, and we're still rolling those out. And I think that, again, the reaction that we're getting from a lot of the employers that didn't have a chance to be filmed, um, they're lining up. Jasmine can attest to the fact that we've got a waiting list now of companies that want to be videoed because they understand that that's what appeals, especially to the younger generation. They don't want to read. A, they don't want to read a job description. They they want it in bullets. They want a video. They want uh, where do I get from A to B to C D in the quickest amount of time? That's how these you know the younger generations think, and we have to adapt. Employers have to adapt. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Sue. Hey, Tiffany. Hello. So back to um, what Miss Sue said, I, I cannot reiterate enough. And matter, we were at a meeting this morning and one of our manufacturers was expressing how difficult it's been to find CNC machinists. And I said, most people don't know what a CNC machinist does is encouraged her to make sure that they did the video card and get it up on the platform because it is, that is how we're connecting with those kiddos. And that to me was one of the attractive things about the platform on the workforce development side was being able to work with our employers, connect with K-12 at the same time, also being able to work with adult. I mean, it just, it, it rounds out what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and it's all on one platform. So it, it, it truly has been a benefit to us. And back to what Latanya was asking about, looking at what the portability for people once they leave, those badges are what helps us do what we do with employees, participants, because we can help them build their resume. So it gives us that connectivity and trying to educate them. This is how you can improve yourself. This is how you make yourself more marketable. Just get in the platform and use it so that you can build those marketability skills, which as we all know, we hear on a daily basis for our employers, those soft skills and the essential skills that they need. And they can obtain a lot of that right there on the platform. Just to piggyback off of Tiffany, we are 
um, constantly looking for ways to uh, assist our educators within the Richmond County school system. And of course, integrating our technical school here at Augusta Technical College um, that has been here 60 years. And so they are attempting to make sure that they have um, adjusted to the differences post COVID and making their rebranding process accessible to all the students within um, this area and with this region. So we have um, partnered with them to bring in the um, talent to work as another um, effective tool in their toolbox and allowing them to integrate um, their course catalogs, allowing students to find those manufacturing jobs and then link to the training possibilities within the Augusta Technical College system without them having to search and um, you know, discover this whole new um, area of websites and um, registration process to be able to link all of those in one place. So Mary and Alice are continuously helping us um, find better ways for us to not only um, connect with our educational entities, but with our business uh, community, the partners that we have um, done the video taping, the recording sessions with, as Sue mentioned, I mean, has just really been not only a, an informative process for us as a chamber to really see the types of um, great programs that are inside of these organizations that we represent so we can engage and advocate in the way that we need to, but to also make sure that we give the people within our region, our job seekers, our consumers, um, an opportunity to really be able to relate to those companies so we can expand and help them develop and grow as businesses. So um, we continue to find new innovative ways and um, Mary and her team continuously support us in that. And we are just really excited about um, the different things that they bring to the table for us each time that we <laughs> come up with something new and brilliant that we think. And of course they always give us the information we need to make it realistic, but um, our partnership with our educational entities is exclusively with the um, Richmond County school system has really been something we are very enthusiastic about and also excited. Um, our CTAE department um, has gotten on board along with the superintendent and the um, assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. And we'll be moving forward to making sure that every high school student um, has that link that's available and that the educators have the um, foundational skills they need in that training process on talent to work. And Jasmine, you you said two key things that I think sum up truly Mary and her team, and that is innovation and integration. Because in working with Yvonne and Lynn over at the chamber, anytime a crazy idea has been presented or question of how can we, can we, and Mary and her team are very quick to go, of course we can, let's make it happen. Um, you know, youth science was one of our big questions originally coming in because we've invested so heavily in the youth science platform and wanted to make sure that the kids could utilize those two platforms together. And Lynn, you can speak to this better than I can, but at the school system level, the kids, once they log in, they have direct access into the WorkBay platform. So those two are together. It's not like the kids are having to go to two different places to try and get this information. It's, it's seamless. So again, can't say enough about how great it's been to work with y'all and truly appreciate the innovative part and the integrative part. And if, but, Oh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to add, I think that um, from our side at the chamber, one thing that's really exciting for us is the platform gave us a way with our business membership and our direct work with employers in our community to bring them to the technical schools and the colleges and to the school system, it helped us make that connection. We connected on the platform and brought resource providers too. So it's given us that one spot for everybody to come together, but it's also guided us in how to connect all of the partners in a very meaningful way so that we all work together better and I think communicate better about what we each need and how we can help each other best. 
Um, and I think that all revolves around the platform and how we you know, bring people together on the platform to meet each other's needs. All right, thank you. Anybody else, questions or comments before we wrap it up for the day? A lot of great information. Thank you everyone, Mary and all the people that helped uh, provide this information. Um, and for the rest of you, thank you for participating in today's demonstration. We will follow up with you soon um, and uh, hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day.